Hi, my name is Jingjie Wang. Uh, I'm currently a research assistant professor in Xinhua University in China. Uh, my report today is recent advances on research of sustainable materials in cementitious materials. Okay, uh, uh, my report is uh, consists of four parts. Uh, as we know, the concrete is uh, uh, consists of the aggregates and the cements uh, and the water. Yeah, so uh, the first part is the geopolymeric recycled aggregate concrete. Uh, it means the uh, aggregate is recycled, and we use the geopolymer to replace the ordinary cement. The second part is recycled cements, so the cement is recycled. Uh, the third part is a bare based uh, COCO3 as uh, green additives. So it means the bare based uh, CCO3 is uh, used to replace part of the ordinary cement. Uh, the first part is using seawater as a mixing water. So it means we use the seawater to replace the fresh water as a mixing water in concrete. So let's start the first part. Uh, as we know, the uh, construction waste, uh, uh, you know, um, after the de demolition of the uh, currently of, of the uh, uh, construction projects, uh, especially in China, we, we can see the figure in the right side. In 2020, uh, the construction waste is around three billion tons. And actually, um, the China's population in 2020 is 1.41 billion. So it it means, uh, it it means it's already uh, more than two tons per person per year since 2020. That's, that's a lot of you know quantities. Uh, how to use this construction waste is an urgent issue. Uh, in our research, we first uh, remove the impurities from the construction waste and uh, crushing them and washing and then drying. Uh, we use the recycled uh, aggregates to uh, to cast the geopolymeric uh, concrete. Uh, uh, the, the geopolymer is composed of the uh, ash, the slag, and uh, the fresh ash. Uh, we use uh, uh, the actually uh, solutions. Here is the prepared uh, NaOH solution and uh, the uh, NaSO3 to activate the slag and the flash. ash. Uh, <clears throat> and we consider the three different water boundary issues. That's uh, 0.3, 0.4, and 0.5. And we consider the different ingredients of the uh, gel polymer. It means the different ratio of the uh, GGBS and the flash. So S25, it means the GGBS is 25%, and the other 75% will be the flash. So it is uh, from the 25% to 75% of the GBS. And also the, we compare it with the normal concretes and the normal recycled concretes, it's NC and RC. So uh, the rest figure is the slump results and the, uh, uh, and the compressive strength of the uh, mixes we studied. And as we can see, the slump value of the most of the polymer concrete is uh, actually better than the uh, normal concrete and recycled concrete. And also the compressive strength is much higher, uh, especially when the GDBS percentage is 50% uh, or 75%. And we composed, uh, we, we published the related results in component part B, and it has been uh, as uh, yes, a uh, has cited paper. Uh, here we, we compare the uh, normal concrete and the normal recycled uh, concrete and also our geopolymeric recycled uh, aggregate concrete. Uh, so the normal concrete is just using the uh, ordinary uh, cement aggregate and water. The uh, normal recycled concrete is using the uh, normal cement and the uh, recycled aggregates and uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, for the S75, uh, it's uh, our geopolymeric uh, 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 polymeric aggregate concrete. It is using the geopolymer and the recycled aggregates. Uh, 
Yeah. Uh, as we can see, the uh, S75, uh, it's the best, uh, it has the best performance, uh, yeah, than the normal concrete and recycled concrete. Uh, here is uh, uh, SEM um, images of the microstructure uh, of the normal concrete. As we can see, uh, it has the normal, you know, uh, the, the, the normal aggregates and the interfacial zinc, and the CSH is the typical cement uh, uh, hydration product and the FT, and we can see the crack appeared uh, in the ITZ between the normal aggregates and the uh, cement paste. Uh, in the right side, it's the recycled, normal recycled concrete. Uh, we can see the recycled aggregates and the old uh, you know, cement paste in the recycled aggregates, and also the new CSH you know, in, in the, in the uh, new cement paste. Uh, we can see the cracks uh, actually appeared uh, in the in the in, uh, recycled aggregates. It's between the old cement paste and the old uh, you know, recycled aggregates. Uh, here we, have, we present the two our Japonimeric uh, recycled aggregates concrete. Uh, the, rest, uh, the left side is S50, it means uh, GDBS and uh, FreshH are both 50%. Uh, we, uh, we use it to replace the uh, ordinary cement. And uh, we can see the cracks um, appeared um, in the recycled aggregates and the it means alumina silicate gel. It's uh, you know it, it's a product in the uh, in the GBS and the flash which are activated by the Akali solutions, and in the right side uh, it's the S seventy five which means seventy percent of GBS the polymer and the AH is quite uh, denser than the left side. Uh, and the cracks, you know, um, a lot, uh, there is no cracks in the AG, but we can see in the left side, there is cracks in the AG. So it means uh, the right side of the AG, the, the uh, alumina silicate gel is much denser than the left side. Uh, here we um, uh, investigated the um, performance uh, uh, under surface attack. Uh, after you know, after sixty cycles of surface attack, it means the concrete is you know uh, suffering the drying and wetting of the surface solutions, and uh, as we can see, uh, uh, the uh, mass loss uh, uh, when it's over one hundred percent, it means the mass is increased. So it means in this three in this three and you know, a polymeric concrete uh, S twenty five S two fifty and S twenty five seventy five uh, there is some you know, chemical reactions happened in this concrete and the rate actually increased but in the normal concrete and recycled concrete uh, the weight uh, the weight is behind one hundred and some around uh, below ninety five and ninety eight percent. So it means uh, there is a mass loss in in these concretes and uh, there is some something loose in these concrete. And the rest said is uh, after these uh, surface attack cycles, the results of compressive strains. Uh, so we can see this uh, polymer recycled aggregates concrete is uh, had much higher, yeah, yeah, had a much higher uh, radio compressive strength after these uh, you know surface attacks than the normal concrete and the normal recycled concrete. Uh, this is uh, the appearance, you know, the our normal concrete, recycled uh, aggregate concrete, and the three polymeric uh, recycled aggregate concrete. After sixty cycles of surface attack, we can see clearly, you know, the the all these three polymeric uh, recycled aggregate concrete had much better performance than the normal concrete and the normal recycled aggregate concrete. Okay, um, my second part is about the, how the cement can be recycled. 
uh, the red figure is uh, you know uh, annual the um, cement production and the related CO2 emissions from cement production in China. So in 2020, uh, the CO2 emissions from from the cement production is around. 1.4 billion. So it's uh, almost equal to the uh, China's population. So it means around one ton per, per cent per year since 2020. Maybe uh, you know, uh, in the future it can still grow. Mm. Uh, actually, in you know, in 2020 September 23rd, uh, the our president Xi Jinping has announced that China aims to hit the uh, peak CO2 emissions before 2030 and to achieve carbon neutrality by 2060. So how to reduce the carbon emission, especially in cement production is uh, also an important issue. So recycled cement will break the old cement paste into pieces you know, and then burn these pieces uh, for eight hours and then cool down. The target uh, temperature, uh, you know, in the furnace we select is based on the performance of the TG of the old cement. Uh, the number one we, we select is around 120. The number two is around 450. Yeah, and uh, number three is 750. And uh, the fourth is uh, over 1,150. And then after the uh, burning and the cooling down, we use a bone meal to uh, to meal it uh, into powder and then uh, seal it uh, with a temperature of 150 or 300 uh, micrometer uh, yeah, and to, to achieve a similar you know, particle size as ordinary cement. Here is a, we prepared you know, this, uh, six types of recycled cement. And uh, their says, and also in um, in the uh, number five and number six, we uh, in number six we use the thirty percent of GGBS. Um, we, we added and uh, to achieve you know, a better re a rheology or the mixing performance because we found the uh, the metric cement is difficult to mix. And the red right side is the particle size distribution of the number two and the number five and OPC. The reason we compare these three is because the uh, 450 degrees uh, burning temperature gives our best performance. And so we, we want to compare this. The cement produced under this um, burn temperature with our ordinary potent cement. Uh, here is the hydration heat rate and the total heat of the OBC and recycled cement. As we can see, uh, the number two is 450 degrees had the highest uh, the hydration heat and also the total uh, hydration heat among all the recycled cements. But it's, it's, uh, uh, it can still not achieve the same as the OPCs. Uh, but uh, um, if it can, it can has you know the similar physical performance that like compressive strings or are, you know durability with the OPCs, uh, it, if it has much lower you know hydrogen heat, it's uh, an advantage because uh, the usually the high uh, you know high early you know uh, hydrogen heat can cause the early cracks so concrete. Uh, here we compare the XRD results of the OPC powder and the uh, number one, two, three, four with uh, recycled cements. In number one, it's uh, burned under 120 degrees. The, the recycled cement powder shows uh, the loss of free water and the patterns of turbomerate and the granite. Uh, under 450 degree, the cement powder shows patterns of turbomerate and uh, Genital is not changing. Uh, but over uh, 70, uh, 750 degrees and no one saw and 100 degrees, recycled cements use no pattern of turmeric and genit. Instead, they become a one stone and a small amount of nanite. Uh, so, uh, we, we, as we know, the turmeric and the genit, uh, uh, as, uh, 
uh, it can you know rehydrate, but the water stone it uh, cannot. They have no hydration reactivity. Yeah. And the small amount of C two S could have could be useful, but the most important most uh, major most part is to one is not, it's, it's, it's inert, it's inert you know, materials. It cannot be used. Uh, uh, here we compare the compressive strains of these uh, of, uh, six types of recycled cements and OPC. And we can see the, uh, the number two and number six, uh, number five, uh, they choose the you know, best uh, performance, the best compressive strains. Uh, these are all burned under you know 450 degrees. So we, we have the uh, red figures, uh, the, the cementitious effect should uh, optimum in around 450 degrees. And uh, when it uh, reached uh, around 750 degrees throughout, because there, there could be some uh, some you know uh, space between 450 and uh, 750, um, maybe. Uh, performs even better. And then we are continuing the related research. Uh, here is, is the reload, rheology results. You know, we, as we know, the rheology is very important part of mixing the concrete. If the concrete can't be mixed, it can't be cast. Yeah? Uh, we rest that is the shear stress and you know, of the ones, two, three, four, six. The reason number two is not uh, reported because it's difficult to mix, and so that's the that's the reason we we added you know the thirty percent of GDBS in the number six recycled cements to achieve you know it so that it can be mixed, it can be cast, and we compare the red and you know the viscosity of the one for two you know as types of Recycled cement with the OPC, we can see the number six. Yeah, it's uh, uh, similar in you know, viscosity as OPC. Yeah. So. Uh, here we evaluate the, all the six you know, um, recycled cements and the OPC, and we can find the number six. You know, it has a, a good strength and a good uh, excellent strength, excellent workability but with low carbon emissions and energy cost, the so overall performance is uh, the best, even then the OPC, but the durability, you know, non-term durability, we are still doing research. And in reds a figure, we, you know, they uh, prefer the abstract of cement cycle. So the cement, you know, can uh, form its own cycle with the continuous, you know, reused and reused. And uh, we compare with the uh, uh, CO2 emissions with recycled cements and uh, uh, the OPC ordinary pollen cement. Um, Averagely, you know, for one term uh, OPC production, there is 0 0.78 tons of CO2 emissions as in our, you know, uh, recycled cement production, especially in. 450 degrees, it's only 0 0.05. It means 94% of this CO2 emissions reduction. But uh, uh, the results, you know, re re reduction of the compressive strains. And we can see the re results of the 1 day and the 28 days, you know, the 450 degrees recycled cement, it has, you know, uh, even slightly higher strengths than the OPC is, it suggests that the recycling could be used to totally replace the OPC. Uh, here uh, we, we see the SEM you know, images of the microstructure of the OPCs and there are two types of recycling cements. Uh, in the OPC piece, we can see the pollen date and the CSH and etching gate. In the 450 degrees recycled cement, so uh, we, actually we can see it's a calcium mixed with the CSH and the calcium carbon monomate. So that's uh, where the uh, carbon or the CO2 is fixed. So uh, yeah, it is fixed here. And the RC and um, you know, uh, 800 degrees 
he states is uh, much uh, porous than the RC450 recycled cement paste. Okay, the third part is uh, we use the bell based uh, C3 as green additives. Uh, here, uh, the bell based uh, uh, CO3 is from the seashell. Uh, the a, a and B is the outer surface and uh, inner surface of the seashells. And the figure C is uh, we ground the seashells you know, into the powder. Uh, since it's, it's mainly the C3, we want to use it to re partly replace the OPC in concrete production. You know? Uh, these three are the SEM images of the limestone powder and the OPC and the seashell powder. The limestone powder is gel based, so, you know, CS3. It's also the CS3. And uh, um, whereas in, in, some, in some cement production, so we added, you know, around 10% of limestone into the cement, you know. Uh, and uh, the, the rest of it is the seashell powder. Where you it's still based to see C3. Uh, the left side is extra debris out. You know, we compare it with this and see seashell powder with lamson powder. You can see lamson powder is mainly the calcite, uh, and the seashell powder is aragonite. Although they are both C3, but so it's different, you know, the crystal forms. Uh, the, the middle part is the TG uh, without setting you know, the weight loss you know, uh, under the different temperatures. So it means the, these two have different, you know, uh, the, the weight loss peak in, in different, you know, the burn temperatures. And then we compare these uh, two with the OPCs part, part of size distribution. Mm. Uh, here we um, you know, use uh, 15 mixes and consider three water band ratios, 0.4, and 0.5. And we consider the different you know, replacement with the seashell powder to replace the OGCs from uh, 0% to 40%. Firstly, we study the rheology with the real meter and to, to st uh, study the effects of this replacement with seashell powder on uh, OPC, uh, how it per performs on the uh, rheology. And we, we fit this, uh, the results into three different uh, models, uh, in -hand model, custom model, and uh, HB model. What we found is the most accurate model is to the HB model with the highest uh, uh, you know, R, R squared, and the you know, is the standard deviation. Uh, here we compare the hydration heat flow rate. Um, the rest said is based on the OPC only. Uh, OPC only it means we, we, when the, the overall uh, heat and uh, divided by the OPC suite and the red side is uh, divided by the total boundary. The total boundary is uh, the OPC and the seashore powder. And we can, see, we can see the seashell powder can enhance the hydration and the heat rates of the OPC. Since the red side, it, it actually increased the per unit, you know, the heat of the OPCs because you know, we know the, the CS3, it can't react with water. Yeah. Here, uh, reverse set is the static uh, yield stress. It's an uh, important you know, parameter for the rheology performance. And we can see with increasing uh, percentage of seashell powder or to replace the OPC, it decreases the um, yeah, static yield stress. It means the mixing is much easier. In rest head is the uh, compressive strains. And also you can see with the increasing um, Generally, it's uh, you know decreasing these uh, compressive strains um, with zero point four forty then five percent even increased a lot. Uh, but uh, you know, um, so it means we can't use you know a very high percentage of seashell powder to replace the OPC because it can decrease the compressive stress significant. Let's say a small amount could be okay. So 
So here is the results, compressive strings uh, results of all 15 mixes. Yeah, we can see the, it all dec uh, decreasing uh, with increasing the um, sexual product content. But so when we consider the um, increase in, uh, in compressive strings, it's compared uh, uh, with the compressive strings at the age of one day. So uh, in three days, seven days, uh, 14 days, 28 days, and 50 days, the results are divided by the, um, the compressive strings of one day. But we can see the uh, the sexual part actually increased this increment. Uh, here is a readout of heat flow rate, hydration, you know, and, and the compressions when the seashell powder was used as addition of failure. What means addition of failure? It means the seashell powder is not used to replace the OPC, but as an ingredient in the concrete. Yeah, we, 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 we don't consider it as a cement you know, replacement, but as an addition of failure. Uh, it, it actually uh, you know, should have a very uh, good performance. You know. So, uh, than the limestone powder. No. See the rest here is heat flow rates. Uh, our seashell powder uh, paste uh, uh, has a much higher peak than the limestone powder. Also, they both they both have uh, are much higher than OPCs because the, the these powders can you know uh, has a good dispersing effect. It ha helps the OPC disperse uh, you know more evenly. And also the compressive strings, our seashell powder paste uh, should um, slightly higher, you know, uh, compressive strings and then a, a ordinary use limestone powder. So it, it, it means it could be used to re actually replace limestone powder. So the last part is using seawater as the mixing water. Uh, as we know, the salt water is more than 90% of the uh, ocean's water and the fresh water is under only 2%. But since fresh water, most part is to ass water we can't use. So the, the ground, ground water, rivers water, yeah, are even nurse. So if we, if we could use the seawater as a mixing water for concrete production, it could be you know, very, very useful. So we prepare the seawater. This is a work I um, conducted in uh, during my postdoctoral you know, study um, in the New York um, uh, University in Abu Dhabi in UAE. We collect seawater from the Arabian Gulf in the UAE and uh, uh, filter through the filtration units, you know, you know, two sequences. Uh, first one is 10 micrometer and uh, followed by five micrometer to remove any unwanted, you know, suspended particles. The salt ions, so it has two different MIP, um, uh, from ICP is the result. So we can see is the salt content is 4.7% by weight. We can see the most part is the chloride ions. It's around, uh, you know, uh, 26 uh, gram um, per, liter, per liter, and uh, followed by the, you know, and, a, uh, <coughs> and also the, uh, the other, you know, uh, ions. And we compare results with the de deionized water, you know, to remove any, any ions. And we, we use the word sim or cement ratio 0.45. Uh, here is the heat flow rate and uh, shear and the shear strings and the dynamic uh, yield strings. The heat flow rate um, is the hydration heat. As we can see, the seawater actually increased the hydration heat. And when we compare the rheology results in the shear strings, so yield uh, um, stress of the seawater and the dia water, or we can see total different you know, uh, rheology performance. And uh, the, <clears throat> the seawater actually you know, increased the yield stress. It means the ions in the seawater you know, take part in the hydration of the cement. And we compare the shrinkage using the setup as in the middle of the uh, page, uh, we can see the seawater uh, 
uh, and uh, interestingly decreased a lot of the shrinkage. As we know, the shrinkage should be controlled because the shrinkage can cause you know, serious cracks in concrete. And we compare the compressive results uh, uh, of the same paste at 8137, 28 days. In all these tested ages, the seawater should much higher compressive strength than the DI water. And uh, we also you know, uh, compare the seawater, the low seawater in different uh, cement types, and you know, like the cement with GDBS, PFA, uh, GDBS means like PFA fly ash, and the uh, silicon film and the stone. We can see in almost you know, uh, all the all the you know, different uh, uh, types of cements, the seawater should you know, much higher compressive strength uh, than the LDI water. And also it increased the viscosity of your stress. Uh, the most you know, serious parts for using seawater is the chloride ions because the chlorine ions can cause the corrosion of steel in the forced concrete. So um, we, we, we want to analyze, you know, how much, you know, the chlorine cl cl ions tools, you know, uh, existed in the, the, in the concrete using seawater. And we, we can see the mm, almost 40% of the chlorine ions existed in seawater could be you know, chemically mobilized in the seawater cement paste through the formation of fried salts, which is a red, red, red figure. Yeah, so it means it's immobilized in, in, in the paste and uh, uh, really, really, really free, free chlorine ions crystal work, but so this immobilized is cannot move freely. You know, it, it can, it, it may not be able to transport to into the surface of the steel and concrete. So it, it, it could be it could be a useful information for us to consider using the seawater. Uh, uh, then we, we, we can see which conclusion the seawater could be used uh, potential alternatives to fresh water for long structural concrete. So when the fresh water is supply is limited. We can probably also aim to use the corrosion resistance and reinforcement to allow the direct use of seawater in the new structural concrete. So it means that when, when the concrete has no reinforcements required, or the, we use the corrosion resistance reinforcements, we can actually use this seawater. Yeah, it, it, it actually gives us um, better you know, compressive strength and really less, much less shrinkage. Yeah. Uh, okay, and everyone, um, I hope I, uh, um, you um, uh, you enjoy my video. And uh, here is my contact. And uh, uh, thank you. Uh, if you have any questions, yeah, I'll be very happy to you know to discuss. Thank you.